working? Is it working okay? Yeah, I can't pause it, so you're oh. still on. Who are you going to ask? I mean, I don't know how to pause it. It, no, you're, you're supposed to, I believe the church won't allow that, but you're supposed to get permission to be married outside the church. You can typically go in front of another Christian minister. So you have to, you have to give the reasons why you want to have the dispensation. So, for example, a Jew and a Catholic can get married. The Catholic has to get the permission. They could do it during a Jewish ceremony, but you have to get permission in order to do it. And it's valid. It's, long. it's not a sacramental because they're not both baptized. It's a natural union. The Hindus get married all the time. It's just as permanent as ours, but ours has the dignity of the sacrament. It's supposed to symbolize the love of Christ for his church. That's what... Yep. What? Accepts marriage between two Jews, two Hindus, two Muslims. They get in another church, yeah, as long as the church gives permission for it. They have to practice their Catholic faith and then try to raise their children Catholic, if at all possible. No, you're not. We'll get to that. We'll clarify that. But you're not supposed to. Because the church would never give you permission for that. That's all those things. That's why a lot of people, that's why a lot of priests think we shouldn't do those special masses because it causes that very confusion. <laughs> okay, let's all have the next Sorry, sorry, sorry. Anyone want to share what they discussed at their table? Or we'll just go keep on. What's that? Go ahead. Yes, So, in order to be married in the church, you need a dispensation. Okay. It's it's basically it, it's I'll, I'll put it this way: the dispensation is like this. Don't you want to be blessed by your mom and dad if you're going to get married? Like I remember my brother-in-law almost peeing his pants when he went to talk to my dad. <laughs> and I married her daughter <laughs> because my dad should, sometimes he came off kind of stern, you know. <laughs> you know, practice the faith. You didn't go to Mass, you didn't get baptized, my grandchildren baptized. That's what he asked. And he said, yes, I will. You have my blessing. Right? That's what a dispensation kind of is. It's asking just for the blessing of the church. And the church is going to allow that for the sake of the union of the spouses. You know that between a Lutheran and a Catholic, maybe their marriage can bring greater unity between Lutherans and Catholics. That's one way of kind of looking at that, you know. Okay, that's the kind. All right, I'll take questions a little bit later. Right? I don't want to get held up, but um, we'll look at questions at the end. Okay, now let's go through the annulment process. So I gave you a yellow sheet, okay? Let's look at this. So this is the annulment process. So this is what typically happens when the annulment process begins. Um, typically a divorce happens. Then typically, a Catholic party or a Catholic party approaches a priest and says, I want to marry again in the, in, the, in the Catholic Church. I want to marry again in the Catholic Church. Okay, you've been married before in the Catholic Church? And many times they say yes, that I have. That means you have to go through a formal process of a annulment. And here's how it goes. You know the Archbishop, the guy with the point he had, and the, and the stick of power, as Archbishop Jacobs likes to say? He is the head priest, the head teacher, and the head judge of the Archdiocese. It's his job to make sure that we're honoring God by learning about God, and then 
keeping the community together. Okay? He can't do it all on his own. So he has these guys named priests and deacons. And there's an office called the tribunal, which deals with issues of the governance of the community of the church. Most of the time, the tribunal takes on marriage cases. So what a person does is that they approach the priest and they say, I would like to seek an annulment. Okay? And the way that I pitch it when I talk with people is, it really is an act of healing. Because everyone who comes to receive an annulment wanted that marriage to work out. They wanted it to. When they were at the altar, they, they wanted it to work out. But they've gone through the pain of it breaking down, and maybe they've met someone, or maybe they just want to have that looked at. So as a Catholic, you have a right to ask the church to investigate your marriage. Okay? Right now, if you look at the law, the church presumes that it's valid. But the church then can investigate. So you write up a petition, and you send that petition in to the Archdiocese of Dubuque, and the tribunal decides whether it's going to take on the case. 99.9, they take on the case. Okay? And what happens is, is one of the priests or the deacons become a judge. They become the judge of the case. And then there's a questionnaire that's sent out to the petitioner and to the respondent, the other side. I want to dispel this misnomer right now. You can receive an annulment of the creative invalidity without the other party participating. There's that misnomer out there that both parties have to participate. That is not the case. They have to notify the other person that that's happening, but they do not have to participate. That does not have to hold up the process of that. So then you meet with the priest, he fills out the petition, he sends it in, then the tribunal sends a set of questions that deal on specific grounds that they're looking at. After an interview and talking and understanding the history of the marriage, most of the time, grounds of a possible annulment start to emerge. The sheet that I gave you are the common grounds that are evidence for a degree of invalidity within the church. So let's, attempt, let's, let's take a look at that, okay? Here's the first one. Lack of canonical form. A baptized Catholic is obliged to contract marriage according to the form required by the church. That is before a priest or deacon and two witnesses. If this form is not observed, and if no dispensation from that form has been obtained, and no subsequent validation of the marriage has occurred, the marriage is invalid by the law itself. So this goes to the fact that if you're Catholic, you have to get married in front of a priest or a deacon and two witnesses, or you've gotten that permission. If that isn't the case, by virtue of that, the marriage is invalid. So that's one of the easiest grounds in order to receive a degree of invalidity. I'll give you an example from my own life. My best friend, Paul, is in this very situation. He married a person outside the church, got divorced, now he married another person who's a Catholic. And she married someone outside the church. I'm like, Paul, this could work out pretty quick, pretty good here. Approach your priest, tell them the circumstances, and they could get their marriage sacramentalized in the church. I'm actually going down there in November. I gave them homework to talk to your pastor. Because I'd love to do your vows in November. So that's an example of that. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Lagana. To prove, so Lagana is a prior bond. That's the Latin word for prior, prior, prior bond. If you remember the gospel that we looked at, a person cannot be married to two people. A person can only be married to one. So Lagana. So if you are trying to attempt marriage and you're already married, it's impossible for you to marry. <coughs> so that's kind of another grounds. To prove that a prior bond, prior valid bond exists, it must be shown that the first marriage was not invalidly contracted, that the first spouse was living at the time that the, sub that the subsequent marriage was attempted, and that neither party, that neither party to the first marriage was a Roman Catholic. So that's that's a circumstance. So that's why you get to the whole language until death do us part. Don't hasten that part, but that's actually where that kind of comes from, okay? Number three, 
incapacity, lack of due discretion. Those who suffer from a great lack of discretion of judgment concerning essential matrimonial rights and duties to be given and accepted are incapable of contracting marriage. It must be proven that a person did not exercise the discretion, the judgment, the foresight, or common sense commensurate with the serious act of marrying. Such a lack of, of, of discretion could result in the transitory causes such as youth and experience and juvenile immaturity. It also could be the product of a psychological factor, a dysfunctional background, which rendered the party incapable of sufficient reflection upon the nature of marriage and then of choosing it with sufficient freedom. This is one that we're starting to see in the culture of divorce. So much divorce is present, but there's sometimes the question, do people understand a lifelong commitment anymore? What pond are we swimming in? We're swimming in the pond that if it doesn't work out, you can check out. So this is, this is something where it becomes very important for us and all of us to, to train our youth, to form our youth, that a lifelong commitment is possible. So that's an example. That's why, like, for example, if someone comes in at the age of 18 and they want to get married, like, okay, you sit right here, and let's talk about that. <laughs> that's actually the requirement of the priest, is that you have to stop, Joe, do you really know what you're doing? I love you, but do you know what you're doing? <laughs> but sometimes you run into 18, 20 years old, and they are, wow, they got it together. Probably because they came from a very solid family. Right? So that's an example of that, okay? Let's look at the next one. Incapacity, lack of due confidence. One who is incapable of assuming the essential obligations of marriage due to psychic causes cannot validly marry. In this instant, there is a disability on the part of a party to the marriage. For some psychological reason, the person lacks the necessary personal resources upon which to accept and fulfill the basic marital requirements. Examples of such psychic causes include serious personality disorders, schizophrenia, alcoholic or drug dependence, or other causes. So if that's present and it's not being treated and it's not being taken care of, the question the church asks is, are you able to marry? Were you able to marry at the time of consent? Okay. I mean, do you see how there's, there, there's that sense of mercy that were you able to? Okay. Is it saying that the person's bad? No. It's just saying that a person has some struggles. Okay. All right, let's look at this one. S simulation. If an individual deliberately excludes marriage itself, that is, does not intend to marry despite having verbally consented to it, or does not intend the marriage as the church understands marriage, the marriage may be invalid. Sometimes this occurs in the validation of a civil marriage. If the parties consider themselves as already married, 